Right, welcome back to Five. My name's Stephen Alson. Here with Rio after United have just lost to Manchester City six three. Um, and Rio, before you get started, I've got I've got some questions, and I want all these lot to get their questions in as well. But I honestly think that questions have got to be asked. You've got I don't care what this guy's won abroad. He's been here a little bit of time now. He spent hundreds and hundreds of millions. How is he conceding three goals at home like that? You what? How is he conceding three <laughs> goals at home like that? When when are people going to come to realise that this guy's not all he's cracked up to be? Who? Pep. <laughs> Good start, that. Good start. At least you're giving me something to chat about. I like that, Steve. Um, what, mate. What I'm fucking serious. Wow. I can't, I can't believe it, mate. I swear I'm, I'm... Well, I can. You know what? I was lulled into a full sense of security, I think, with a few of the games that we've had recently after the first two games of the season. And you saw some shape and whatnot coming back into the team. But I tweeted earlier, the golfing class between the two clubs now is, wow, it's huge. Today, the first half, the scoreline doesn't tell you the full picture. It, it, the, the three goals flattered us. I think the way that they dismantled us, they sliced for us, the midfield of how open we were, um, it just went back to the first two games of the season. It was just, we looked like we were in disarray, but you have to give huge credit to Man City first and foremost, the way that they played. Yes, they're a well-functioning, well-oiled machine that have added an absolute alien in the front line, uh, Haaland, uh, the way that he plays. Even if you watch him after he scored the, his third goal, he was running, aggre the aggression with the running and trying to still get on the end of things. It's just like, that's what you want to see. And then to be a Man City fan now and a Man City player even more, they must be absolutely delighted. I think Haaland, at the moment, unstoppable. Three hat-tricks in his last three home games. Um, are absolutely unplayable. And we were talking about, will, will the United team be able to deal with him? Not a chance. Couldn't get near him. Couldn't deal with anything. I think two assists and three goals. Foden, can we get that Foden in an England shirt, please? Gareth Southgate, there it is. It's there. Please unlock that in an in a England shirt. The same with Jack Grealish, please. I thought he didn't score today, but I thought he'd done so many, especially in the first half, so many things that contributed to, to, to the way that they played. Um, I think, listen, before the game, we were, we were, we were questioning Rodbury out of the team. Huge opportunity for us. Man City, their two probably first choice centre backs weren't playing today. Like, this is a good opportunity to go to the Etihad and get something out of it. They just said, no, no, no. Don't matter who you play, we will dismantle you, we will destroy you. And I just thought at times we were too open, too naive, give the ball away when we had it too many times, too easy in the first half, turnover of possession. Um, and you look at it, you go, that team, we actually beat Liverpool and Arsenal playing counter-attack football with that team. Yeah, and I thought that was a, a perfectly valid way to go to the Etihad to set up to try and... Like, if if Ten Hag had gone, no, I'm going to try and out-possession this City team and I'm, I'm going to try and squeeze them and uh, and create loads and loads of opportunities and, and win the game that way, everyone had gone, lost his head. It, that's how you go to this City team. This is a City team that I would have to say is at the peak of its power at the moment. They... For me, they are the favourites to be European champions this season, as second as that is. And I think I agree with you. They've they've got a freak up front that's just what is it eight nine goals away from equaling last season's golden boot. He's got thirty Steve, games left to play. Steve, I, I see a stat come through. I put it in the group earlier in the WhatsApp group, didn't I? Haaland has played eight Premier League games. He's now got more Premier League hat tricks than Cristiano Ronaldo. Who else was the other ones? I think it was. Ronaldo, uh, let me just see. Hold on. He's got more Premier League hat tricks. <laughs> it's actually it's a joke. <laughs> Haaland now has more Premier League hat tricks than Ronaldo, Vardy, and Frank Lampard. Let that sink in. And he's got eight, he's played eight games. <laughs> it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. He's actually playing. He's like, you know, when you used to be in the playground as a kid and you go in your, your first year in, in, uh, in secondary school. And you, you, as a first year, a couple of the sixth formers come over and just take liberties in the game and just like take the ball off you, do what they want, brush you aside, give you a clip round the ear and walk off the pitch and, and, and they banged in two or three goals at will. That's how he's treating the Premier League right now. 
it doesn't look like he's he's phased yet, does it? It doesn't look like he's struggling yet. It looks well within himself still. This. Yeah, no one, no one's, no one's done anything in any game yet. Just made him go. Oh, this is this is what the Premier League I'm expecting. That's mm. that's the toughness. That's the difficulty that I was expecting in the Premier League. I think he's sitting there going, and I think he's sitting with his mates and his teammates and going, I can't believe how easy this is, guys. And there's two there's two reasons for that. One is obvious, his ability. The second is how good this team is, because he what he does is he he controls the two centre halves. They can't go one v one against him. I haven't seen a pair a, a, a defender yet say I'm going to go one v one and play against you and then free up another player. So they get pinned back, and when that happens and they can't come out, which we saw in the first goal that the, the, the centre halves can't come out to the midfield area. And the midfielders drop into the back four because they want to protect almost as well and get around him. Mm-hmm. So then the midfielders like De Bruyne, Silva, um, uh, what's his name, um, Foden, they're getting so much space in them areas to just slice us open. And then De Bruyne's pass for the goal, man. Seriously, I didn't. Well, no one. I was, t- was going to build in to ask you some questions. Sorry, um, go on. Let me go, you take it off. So a few of the things that I was going to point out is. I think it was their first four goals uh, until I stopped really paying attention. There were four different sorts of goals. They shot, uh, they sort of shown their full array of attacks. Then it wasn't like a, a typical city goal. There was like a different way of scoring each of those goals, which is a mark of a really good team that they've just got all these different tools to be able to beat you. Um, but the, I tweeted in the first half after the first corner, Ericsson marking Harland at the corner worries me. And then the next corner, uh, obviously, he scores from that. Some people were saying, oh, that was because Ram wasn't on the pitch. You're not listening. Ericsson was marking Haaland from the corner, which for me, that was a mistake from the coaching staff. Um, I think the tactic to try and play on the counter was the correct one, but I think that one was a mistake from the coaching staff. Ericsson on Haaland was a mismatch from... That's got to be your best header, surely. What, that's got to be what Ram. I, I want my best headers against their most dangerous players. That's like what we used to do back in the day. There was no way that one of the one of the, the, the creative midfielders who who probably is the one of the least physical on the team is going to be marking their best man in the air or most aggressive man in the air. What I would say, sometimes you, you I can understand teams put, putting their biggest players in the areas where the ball comes more often than not, which is the front page, uh, post uh, space and middle of goal. I get that, yeah. right? But then if you're going to get somebody to mark that danger man and their best attacker of the ball, and he's going to be smaller, et cetera, that person has to be still, yes, you can be smaller, but you've got to be aggressive. Someone yeah, like, we, we, we used to have like a Patrice Ever that might do that. Gary Neville could do that. Do you know what I mean? People that weren't the tallest, but they knew there was Wiley characters. They could, they could nudge and jostle. And so when the ball is on its way, the, the aggressive player that normally attacks the ball is off, off balance the rhythm's gone and then the chance is gone. But you asking somebody in them areas and them, them them positions is quite feeble, really. That's not one of his best judges. He wouldn't sit sit there and go, marking in from corners is one of my top ten attributes that I've got in my game. He would say that's something that I've never even considered. I'm normally edge of the box. Do you know what I mean? So that was startling to me. I, 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 I didn't get that at all. Varane being off the pitch obviously wasn't ideal, but like you say, he wasn't marking him anyway. Yeah, the other thing was the ball from Kevin De Bruyne for Haaland. I don't think Varane did anything wrong, but how should, what is the textbook there? Because I actually, I don't know. I, I I couldn't explain what you're supposed to do. You know, have you got some more insight there for us that how do you think you would have defended that pass? Because it was an unbelievable pass. A phenomenal pass. And what I would say is sometimes you've got to just go, what a pass. And just admire the pass and say, you know what, that I, I, I couldn't have done anything about it. What I will say as well, all of us at home, when he played that ball, I don't think we any of us saw before, before his foot touched the ball that that pass was ever going to be on. It was such a, a it, it was such a, a small area that he had to hit, and he had to get perfect, and he ends up ex- executing it. it. Was like ridiculous. So it was a great ball. I've been on the WhatsApp groups. A few people saying he could have done better. Yeah, you got to, when you're playing against a Haaland, you know where he wants the ball. He wants the ball behind you. He wants the ball in that little, it's called the, the corridor of doubt, where the goalkeeper doesn't know whether to come or the defender doesn't know whether to go for it. And he played it in the perfect area. 
One thing I would say as a centre back, you always want help from your right back, your full back. Dalot maybe could have tucked in him because he's seen where he is. He's a danger man. He could have tucked in maybe and been in security. That was what Gary Neville was brilliant for me at. Sometimes where I might have switched off at times and you get a saviour from your full back, Wes Brown, Gary Neville, they're there. They're inside, they get inside the post to make sure they lock that off. Um, he wasn't afforded that. And then it's obviously clinical from Haaland. But I have to say, I put that down to just great football. I'll be honest. It's, it's, it's a difficult one. He could reach out with his leg maybe and, and try and do something, but then he's probably scoring an own goal. It's that yeah. good a ball. I, I, there was nothing that I looked at. And even on the replays, I was like, I, I don't think he's made a single mistake here, really. I mean, yeah, you, like you said, you might have an opinion over he could have maybe done this or maybe done that, but there's not an obvious mistake in, in how he's no. approached that pass coming in. And like you said, you know, it's a, a phenomenal midfielder has just found a phenomenal striker with a phenomenal ball. Steve, Steve I think the, first, the early part of the game, we couldn't lay a glove on him. They, nope. they were passing the ball around us at a pace that we just weren't up to getting there. We, we, we were, it, looked, looked, it looked like we were passive. I don't know if it's just that they were that good and we were that bad. We're just not that good enough. Tactically, where do we go from here? Are we going to well, be a counter-attacking team? Or are we I, just think gonna... you've got a, I think the fact that you know, Oli had success trying to play like this is that in, in certain games, yeah, you don't go, you know, how can anyone be expected to go to the Etihad and try and dominate the ball? You, that's ludicrous. I wouldn't expect Real Madrid to come and dominate the ball at the Etihad. I'd expect them to try and let City do what City are going to do. And I thought I thought the game was going to go the way it was starting, but then when they just started to score the goals, the, the issue for me was that when we did get in possession, we didn't look like we had any quality. We looked like we didn't have any idea. It wasn't yeah. a final ball. It was the penetrative ball to get to the final ball that wasn't even there. Like, also, but I think that they're forcing that as well, Steve, because the way yeah, they, press, they press very well. They did my last, one of my boys said to me, Dad, how come it just looks so easy for City and it looks so hard for United? It's the difference in pressing, the way that they press. They press on the front foot high up the pitch. We retreat, let them get into a rhythm and then try and stop. It's a very different way of doing it, but they they have it and they work a system. Obviously, they've had the manager for a longer time, so they're used to it more than what he wants. But I, I'll be honest, I don't have. A, I ain't got a clue where we go from here. Like we spent a lot of money in this window as well. Um, I think one of the things we need we need to do if we didn't already is accept. Listen, that we are nowhere near Manchester City. They are. We've got our work cut out um, to try and get near them. We were starting to believe a little bit as a fan base, I think, but that today has put us back again because you, and and I, I would, I'd like to be in a change room. I'd like to be hearing what's being said by the manager. It's it's, um, it's difficult. It's going to be a tough one for him to, to swallow, but they're going to have to do a lot of work, which they are doing. And I know that behind the scenes with the coaching staff there and the management, they're doing a lot of work behind the scenes, but Tactically, we've got to find a way that suits our players. And I thought we had that going into this game. But today, I mean, if you look in the first half, we, we didn't seem like we had the legs to get even up against anybody. Do you know what I mean? Mm. There was the space that their midfielders had on the ball. It was like, And like you say, when we got the ball, we looked bereft of ideas. We didn't have no ideas of where to play the ball. We didn't retain possession. Yes, you can say the City were because of the way they pressed us, but also it was a lack of, Balls, bollocks on the ball. Do you know what I mean? You, you, in these games, you need people that are going to stand there. And I, I looked, I was talking to you guys on the WhatsApp group earlier. And I was going, is this worse than the 6 1 we got beat and when I was playing? And I didn't even realize, I actually forgot this because the game was such a, it's a blur to me now. It, we were, it was 1 0, and then someone got sent off. And then they scored um, three goals. It was um, Johnny Evans got sent off. Yeah. Fletcher scored at some point to make it, I think, 3-1. Hmm. Was it did it go to 2-1? I know they scored three in the 90th minute. I think I think, I think they went 3-1 or whatever. But they, they scored three like in around 90 minute in the 90 minutes yeah. area, which flattered them a little bit. But they they, were they had seven better. shots on target in that game. But they were they listen, they were much better than us. But we I, I didn't realise we had a man sent off. I forgot all about that. So this, this yeah, game Johnny Evans. Today was absolutely much worse than what, what, what I went through. But what I would say is I was thinking more about the feeling. How do you feel? Yeah, I was, well, I was going to ask you this. You've been in a dressing room on the receiving end of this exact thing, pretty mm. much. What do you say? What do you want to hear? What do you want to... And I don't, I'm not just talking here from the manager, but like, I think as a player, you want to hear your teammates 
yeah. have something to say about this, surely. Do you know what? I used to like it when there was arguments uh, at times like this. Arguments or you, or there was a few people snarling. That's I like that because I could see, one, there's, there's care, there's um, pride being bashed and not happy about it, and then we're going to do something about this. There's going to be a reaction to this. I didn't like it, and it didn't really happen very often, but when there was when it was quiet, I didn't like it. I didn't like it when there wasn't much to be said after a game. You want answers early. You want answers quick. I felt better, me personally, when there was an argument and everything and there was a few things thrown in the hat and then you get on your own and it goes quiet afterwards and you can start deciphering the performance, deciphering mm. the individuals, who who was at it, who fancied it, whose heads went in there between their shoulders like a tortoise when it was started getting on top. But you want... You want I liked it when it got a little bit hot in the change room. And again, I'd be interested to know if it got hot today. Were there people pointing fingers? Were there people snarling? What at happened each in other? that game at Old Trafford? I think, I don't know. I think, I'm not, I can't remember. I'll be honest, I can't remember that exact one. I mean, but I, I remember other games where it was like we have been beaten. It might have been just like a, a 2 1 or a 1 0. We weren't as like a, a fresh and like that. But where there was argument, listen, I remember games where we'd won and there was almost fights. Do you know what I mean? Because the, the, the things didn't go that how certain people wanted it. And you want, I, I, I think you hear a lot of people saying now, yeah, managers, Seth Fabregas said it yesterday, actually, Conte never really spoke after a game, win or lose. He'd wait 24 hours, then come back at you. David Moyes used to do that a little bit. I hated it. I wanted a reaction. Fergie didn't, it, 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 most of the time it was a, if you've been beat or whatever, then he'd get into you straight away. And then again on the Sunday, he could probably get into you again. Hmm. The other occasion where he said, Listen, I can't explain that. I'll see you tomorrow in training. You was going to have a day off. Now you're coming in tomorrow. Um, but, but again, everyone deals with it differently. I think Ten Hag has got a lot to do to build this, this, this squad's morale back up again because obviously the first two games of the season, we're on our knees, this team. Gradually, we've been building it up. But there hasn't been enough games or time or good performances as a collective or and individuals in that period to really take away the frailties that are there beneath the exterior of us looking like we're back. We're still quite a frail group, I think, in terms of confidence, given what this team have been through. And we saw that today when the, when the first goal went in, heads went down. Yeah, I think I agree with what you said earlier. We started to see a bit of a, a system where the players look confident playing it, but it wasn't rock solid confidence built on years of winning and success. It was it was very shaky, fragile, don't touch it, it might disappear sort of confidence. And yeah, I think I, I believe we could have won that game today, but it required City having some errors in them. And I thought when we saw their team sheet with no uh, Rodri in it especially and then you know arguably their third and fourth choice center half this is how you do it but because we weren't decisive in when we did get the ball on the transition we didn't threaten City like every single time we've gone to the Etihad under Guardiola because of the high line that they play we've always got in behind it and we've always looked like we would be a threat even if we didn't look like we we're going to win that game we always looked like there was goals in us and even if we scored three today it didn't feel like we were scoring free today, did it? At no point did you think, like, we're going to get loads and loads and loads of goals here. Like, no. I mean, like, Steve, what's he going to do with, 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 with uh, Cristiano now? What, well, that's a big, a good question. What's what's happening with Cristiano? I see the pictures on the, on the, on the side of the pitch. It looks dejected. Looks He's like, probably going to uh, play against Ammonia Nicosia, in it, right? But <laughs> for Cristiano Ronaldo to be the guy that plays against Ammonia Nicosia, and that's only a maybe, because if he thinks Tony Marshall comes on today scores two if he thinks Tony Marshall is going to be his number nine well he needs to get match fit because he's not really played a lot since the start of the season so he might he might prioritize getting Tony Marshall fit because he sees him being his number nine for the more important games than just giving Ronaldo a run out because technically you know why does he owe Ronaldo a run out he's here to mm. do whatever the best is for his team um and I mentioned this the other day on one of our podcasts and we was trying to explore what's happened with Cristiano over the last six months Obviously, we, he's lost one of his ch uh, children. He's had uh, a massive kick to the bollocks in terms of his his ego and his status 
by not being in the Champions League. He also probably had a kick to the ego in the summer when nobody came in for him, um, when he was looking like he was trying to get a move. And I think all of those sorts of things, you know, you yourself obviously dealt with grief while you were still a player. Like, what did that do to your performance? And is that a factor, do you think, in Ronaldo's performances? I don't know. Well, I saw Cristiano around that time. And um, obviously, and his family, it's, it's, it, hits, it can hit you. And it, it would have hit him really, really hard. Um, but I don't think he would have even, I don't think him himself would sit there and go, that's the reason why I'm not playing now. I don't think he'll put it down to that. I think he, he, he'll trust him. He's not playing, but perhaps why he's not at his best. Yeah, but again, I think listen, I think the one of the main reasons for me is that he missed preseason. Yeah. Any player, whether you're 21, 25, or 37 the age Cristiano is, if you miss preseason, you're you're behind. You're playing catch up. And some players never recover that throughout the whole season. They've got to wait till next preseason and get get back. Um so I think he he's playing that luxury at 38, though, has he? That's what I mean. And he, he, he I think he's been playing catch up physically, but if anybody physically can get back to, into shape quick, I think Cristiano is the guy in terms of not just because of um, how he looks, but also he, his mindset. He knows his body. He understands the experience he's got at getting himself into tip-top condition for big moments and, and, and for uh, for his career. He's done that for years and years and years. So I think that's coming. I think that's the biggest concern for Cristiano is, is one, he wants to get match fit, so he knows he needs games. And normally he's been given afforded those games, which now he's not being given. And I think the argument that Ten Hag had is that the team's winning. How can I change it? Um, and he'll be thinking with one eye on the World Cup as well. I need to get match fit. So he wants, he's going to want games. Um, and that's going to be the, 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 the situation that I'm going to be keeping a keen eye on. I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, what's going to happen here? Casemiro's another one, man. He's sitting there going, I've won five Champions League on the, like with this team. I've played in a midfield that I heard some people today saying, oh, it's, he, he, um, if he plays, he needs legs around him. He can't play with Ericsson and Bruno and blah, blah, blah. This geezer played with two snails in Modric and Tony Crew. He, he just knows his way around the football pitch, this fellow. He, just, he is a fantastic defensive midfielder, one of, if not the best in the world, before yeah. he came to well, United. But you can't is, make the case that his form in a United shirt warranted starting him over Scott McTominay. Mate, can't say, being you, can't, you, can't, you can't say that. The geezer hasn't been given a chance. He ain't been given a fair crack of the whip. He's come in and played in a Champions League game against like or a Europa League game against some dead team. Like I don't he, he ain't been given, oh, I'm gonna start you in, in the in the team when you come in, when you're fit, when you're ready. He's actually digressed in terms of fitness. So mm. he he's he's now worse off than when he came. He still had to get up to speed when he came from from, from that league to this league. I I wonder the impact he's having on someone like him. Yes, he's experienced and whatnot, but he he's, he's must be sitting there feeling, wow, I think I've got to be honest. I'm happy to be here at Man United. I'm, I'm delighted. It's a new project, but I'm feeling a little bit disrespected here, given what I've done. I'm telling you, that's what he, he, I, I'll be surprised if he's not feeling like that. It'd be interesting to see when he does become a full-fledged starter, first choice, week in, week out, because it's going to happen. It's inevitable. It will happen. And it there might be in the next game. We've got like nine games this month anyway, haven't we? So I'm sure we're going to see both him and yeah. Ronaldo. Yeah, and I, I think we will. But I think it's, it's seeing them, it's the context of how what games they're playing, isn't it? Like you say, they could be playing midweek in Europa games. That's in the, it, That won't sit well with them. And I, and I think they'll be looking at it going, wow, well, I'm like a Ron Below's cup player right now. You know what I mean? A Carabao cup player. Like I've gone from Champions League winner and... In are, they both in, are they in double digits between them for your uh, for Champions League wins? Yeah, I think it's 10 or 11 between them. Unreal. <laughs> but, I mean, these are just subplots to what Ten Hag's got to deal with. So, like, he's brought these, he's got this player. He's, this is what management's about now, isn't it? He's got to manage that type of player, that type of ego, the pride that comes with those type of players. I'm not playing. You're going to see a difference in the way that I'm looking at you now. And that's what you've got to manage. He didn't have them problem, these problems at, at somewhere like Ajax with the players that he's got there, very much in control and the master of the of the universe there. Here you've got big egos to deal with. And this, this is the task when you come to a top club. But listen, man, a lot of uh, things to work out, but there's nothing... No one, there's, 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 The way that we got punished today by this City team, they are light years in front of us. Yeah, like I said a couple of weeks ago, this big freak's going to win him a Champions League, isn't it? 
Yeah, I don't see that. Like I said to you earlier, I don't see a centre half at the moment sitting in this league going, I'll be happy to play 1v1 against you. Come on, let's have it. I think no, we need to do a video, maybe on a training ground somewhere, where if we can go and borrow a big, a big idiot from like an NBA team or something that can um, stand in as Harland and uh, get you on a training ground and show us how you might deal with him. I think that'd be a good video to do. Yeah, I think it will. But again, it's, it's uh, there's so many different areas to think about when you're talking about looking after Harland. Yes, you need to look after him and keep him under wraps, and concentration has to be at its premium the whole time you're on the pitch, right? What about? If you took like um, a packet of hobnobs on the pitch with you and just mm. like from from on the floor for him and distract him. <laughs> but the, 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 as big a problem, right, is De Bruyne. Yeah. Like if it, like for instance, my bit my thing when I if I was playing, when I was playing against big strikers, good strikers, top players, my thing was I would be putting people around the pitch and just trying to move people about in front of me to stop the supply. Is to, is to get in positions to stop that supply, to get in, in areas where the ball can't be threaded through to his feet or down, I'll be the channel side, stopping, making sure the man on the ball thinks, I ain't going to play at channel side, Rio's already there. Or dropping off a little bit, there ain't the space in behind. But these are all like, it's because the scenario and the pictures change so quickly in the game. And if one part of the team isn't functioning properly in front of you, sometimes it takes all of your power away as a defender because... If the man on the ball is good enough, they're going to find them. Do you know what I mean? It's it's it's, it's very difficult, and it, but it's doable. Don't get me wrong. But you need other things to work as well. You need a bit of luck. You need other players to be playing their role in the in, in in the game to help you as well. You need protecting at times as well. You can't always do everything on your own when this pitch is so big, when the spaces are so big around you, when there's that much quality on the pitch to find that guy. So and and all those things weren't happening today. Right, we're back with uh, Vibe. With, I'm not looking forward to seeing him tomorrow, you know. Oh, shit. Joel tomorrow's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> Imagine the get up, the attire he's coming in tomorrow. If, if he wears shades tomorrow, I'm choking him out. That's just yeah. done. Um, right. So we're back with Vibe with Five tomorrow. I've got to go and do 10K, and I well can't be asked. Listen, good luck with that, man. I like seeing you do that. Good. Keep it up. 45 days straight, Rio. 10K we wait. It's, I'm in pain here today. I'm struggling walking around up here. And it's not going to be fun. Hopefully I'll warm up. Better man than me. Listen. So uh, I'll see you in the morning and I'll see you a lot tomorrow afternoon when we, uh, when we have to deal with Joel. And uh, That was worse than... It's going to be worse than watching that, this. Oh, see you man. tomorrow. See you, mate.